Hi guys, welcome to episode three of Kicking It With Kahu. Today we'll be catching up with Owen, aka Bold, who is a professional Halo player and represented New Zealand at the 2016 Halo World Championships. So I'm really looking forward to this interview. Let's meet Owen. Hello, thank you so much for joining us today. Now, the first question that I need to know, where did the name Bald come from? Because it's not the, what I thought it would be. Yeah, oh, this, this question, I, I get asked this one a lot. Yeah. Um, but basically like back in the day, I used to get a really short haircut. So it was like a number two, like buzz cut, you know? So I'd be rocking that back in college and everything. And so people would just call me Baldy. So that's how I came and I was like, oh, Baldy. And then I, and then I needed a gamer tag for Xbox. So I was like, oh, what am I gonna do? What am I gonna do? So I, so I ended up using Bald Unit. I, I, don't, I don't know why, but I just did. And then um, that, that name ended up getting banned from Xbox Live. They, they didn't like it. I, I, don't, even, I don't know why, but- um, Did yeah. the name get banned or did you get banned? No, I don't get banned. Okay. No, 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 I'm a, I'm, I don't cheat or anything. No, 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 nothing like that. No, no, no toxic no, no, talk no, or no, anything no, nothing in like chat? That. Okay. But, um, <laughs> nah, so that got banned and then I, I changed it to the bald one. And then I think I had a team name uh, which I needed to put in the tag, right? So, cause people like to put their team in the, which my team was Team Sidewinder. So our, our little tag was TSW. So I needed, so I just wanted, I didn't want bald one TSW or something. So I just used bald. And, 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 then, <laughs> and then since then it's just been bald and I just used the one, you know, the one word and that's where that's been, so. Cool, can yeah. you tell us a little bit about where you grew up, where you're from, um, your age, just a little bit about you as a human being. So I'm from Wellington, I've been there my whole life. Uh, I, I'm 29 years old and I've been playing Halo for a long time, I like maybe, I've been competing for over 10 years and I've been playing Halo for probably maybe 15 or so. Like it's, it's a long time. I'm an old boy. Um, so starting out right back at the beginning, what got you into gaming in the first place? Um, into, into gaming, I would have been playing the PlayStation 1 or maybe the <laughs> Nintendo 64. I can't, it was one or the other. It was, there were similar times when I got into it. But yeah, I playing like Crash Bandicoot. Yeah, like all those yeah. like, oh. I love those games, eh? And I used to, I guess I would, I get not like competitive, but I, because I'm like kind of a competitive person. Yeah. I don't know, like playing those levels, like my, me and my brother would be like racing each other on who could like do the do the map the fastest and you know, and then I'd, I'd always, I reckon, I reckon I'd always top them. <laughs> I, I was taken down. Um, and then we played a few like um, multiplayer games. I think maybe like, I can't remember what it was like, maybe some oh, the time splitters. Uh, what was that? It was on PlayStation, yeah. Time, which is another like shooting game. We'd like play yeah. that multiplayer and we'd like shoot each other around. And I'd always just, you know, I'd try and be the best. So. Did you find that you kind of like naturally gravitated towards shooters? Did you have a particular interest in it or? Yeah, I think, um, well, I don't know. I guess it appealed to me. It was kind of fun. I, I Like I said, I like you know, the competitive side mm. of things. And then, and like in a lot of shooters, you know, you can try to beat people and just, you know, you mm, can win. Yeah. And I guess that's like how I got into it. Like, I mean, there's other games obviously that you can, it's the same kind of thing, but yeah. I guess, yeah, I don't know why. I just got into shooters. I originally, I played a lot of RuneScape. That's completely different, but. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, but I love that game. Oh, great game. I mean, cause when I first got into gaming, it was like Pokemon and then it got to like Overwatch and League of Legends oh, and yeah, stuff. Yeah, so yeah. yeah. I had a bit of those as well, fun, <laughs> fun games. So as you started gaming and obviously realized that, well, you're actually quite decent. Was there like a certain point that you realized you could go pro with this? Or did it, did you kind of just fall into it? Uh, yeah, so I, I think I would have been playing Halo and then I got, there was like these ACL, the, the Australian Cyber League online comps. And so I ended up getting like a team, putting one together, playing that. And we started doing like pretty, pretty good. And I was like, oh, I mean, I'm actually, I'm, I'm half decent, I reckon. <laughs> uh, and then there was, there was, I think one of the, and back in 2010, that was my first LAN tournament that I played in. So a couple of years ago, uh, wait, so wait, that means I've been competing for like, Wait, even longer don't think than about it. Yeah, yeah, don't think about yeah. it. <laughs> so, um, yeah, there was a tournament and I ended up winning it with my team, Team Sidewinder. Oh, nice, well done. And yeah, no, that's, and that, then from then on, I played multiple tournaments, you know, got, you know, bigger and better things and yeah. What were the LAN events like back then? The LAN events, yeah. I imagine they, they, they were quite small. Yeah, no, nah, definitely. They were a lot, a lot smaller than what they are these days. <laughs> now you get these big events with these big like projectors and screens and, you know, back then it's just, you know, you bring your own console and you bring your own mm. monitor, you know, it's, it's all BYO, you know, you gotta do the hard yards. You gotta, I, one time my, my monitor got lost when I was bringing it up from Wellington in the plane and then I was like, oh, this, oh, is, no. this is not ideal. <laughs> um, but yeah, no, it's it completely different. You know, it's all bring your own stuff, set it up. They just have the, you know, the, the room ready with maybe a couple of tables. And then, yeah, it's like, 
just completely different. I think these days, if someone was told oh, for this tournament, you have to bring your own stuff, they'd be like, nah. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like it's, yeah, now, now, you know, all I do is bring my controller and headset and I'm good to go, yeah. which is great. I mean, I love it now. Like, have you, like, over the years, have you found that there's, like, more, like, diversity, like, people, like, different ages um, competing, or has it all kind of stayed the same over the years? Uh, yeah, I mean, I feel like uh, it stayed fairly similar. Like, we, we always used to have, like, you know, some older players, some younger players. Yeah. It was always, I think, I feel like there's always been a mix. Yeah. Um, and I don't think that's changed too much. I would say in terms of, like, there's more, like, female competitors now. That's probably one thing. Yeah. Back a few years ago, there was maybe one one <laughs> and now you, you know got, got multiple people trying to like compete like you know, it's really really cool to see as well so what is your standout event yeah my standout would be cloud land back in 2010 so that's my first ever land tournament and I, I guess it stands out you know it's my first one because previously i was always playing online mm -hmm. it was you know online 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 like before my time before i started playing they they had a ton of like tournaments right like in person which was like their main tournament structure, how they would always do it. But then when I came along, you know, the internet became bigger, online gaming became bigger, and there was just always online tournaments. And then, yeah, they, they there was this Cloudland event they talked about, and I was like, oh, sounds interesting. <laughs> so my t me and my team were like, you know what, we're gonna go to this one. And yeah, that's, that's uh, I went to my first event, won my first event, <laughs> and I was like, you know, this is, this is great. I, I like playing like land tournaments. It's just, it's, it's a whole nother experience. In real life, people, trash talking, yeah. um, a ho whole bunch of that going. Because online you don't get that, you know, people are just in like a different call or something. You can't hear them actually saying anything. Yeah. It's, it's, you know, some of it gets a bit intense, but it's, I feel like it's all just part of the fun, you know. And then, yeah. This weekend is Armageddon and there's a Halo tournament with a prize pool of $20,000. How has the prize money changed? I imagine it was not a lot back in the day. Yeah, nah, not even close. Like, <laughs> it, like back then, it definitely it wasn't about the money. I think yeah. people just really enjoyed like playing tournaments and playing the game. Uh, and then you know, I think the prize maybe we made a few hundred dollars or something. You know, small. It covered maybe my travel to the event from Wellington. Mm. You know, my flights and everything. But yeah, nowadays every tournament just has a big prize, and mm. it's like it's obviously drawing. It's like a draw card. <clears throat> ah shit! <coughs> Do you need your water? <coughs> yeah, we'll dry it up. Um, no. Nah, um, where was I? Um, no, I got it here. So, sorry. Um, what did I say? Uh, it wasn't money, about money. The money, yeah. Um, you know, a couple hundred dollars mm. uh, covered my flights and everything. And then, yeah, nowadays it's just big money. It's, yeah, crazy draw cards to, you know, attend these events, which I think it, it brings in people and it, like, makes people want to play because obviously everyone wants the money. Yeah. <laughs> um, but, yeah, for me it's not like, it's never really been about the money. I think I do just enjoy playing, you know playing the games and everything. And I guess some, some, sometimes these days I feel people just want the money and there's not yeah. too much passion for the game. Yeah. And I think it's, it's not great, but it's also, I don't know, at the end of the day, money is money and people want money. So it brings yeah. people in and it makes people play and it, you know, it's more entertainment. When there's more people and there's more people at the tournaments, I feel like it's, it's a lot better as well. Um, you know, it's just a bigger variety of people to play against them. So it's all fun, it's all fun games. And then it helps the game grow anyway, which means more events, you know, more money's getting put into it. And like all the, you know, sponsorships and everything, it brings, you know, publicity and there's like yeah. advertisements and everything, you know, it'll, it'll, yeah, it all makes it bigger and yeah, bring more people in, which I think is just a huge part of it. You know, you want more people, you want more people yeah. to play Halo, please. <laughs> please. <laughs> so you represented New Zealand at the 2016 Halo World Championships. Can you please tell us a bit more? about that and what was that like yeah that, that was like that's definitely like on the top of my list is like you know one of the the coolest experiences and i don't know just making it to the world champs in like los angeles it was a the prize pool was like four million so like first place was like a million dollars us i think as well um you know we didn't end up doing too well uh, <laughs> uh we played what top 16 out of 16 teams um but yeah, uh, prize wise, I mean, we we still won like twenty five thousand between us, which was like yeah, it was like one percent of the prize pool, I think. So oh, so it would have been two point five million, um, yeah, like four million NZ, uh, and but yeah, the whole experience was like amazing, eh? like just a huge event, like something that you would never experience in this country, and um, yeah, the whole like the whole pathway to get to that event was also like pretty cool because like you had to like qualify for like a regional event, so you had to go through Australia, so we had to play in a six team regional event which was in Sydney uh, and you had to be a top two 
at the event to qualify for world champs. And we weren't one of the ones that were meant to make it. So it was kind of like an underdog story. So it was, it was pretty co- it was pretty cool, you know? I feel like being an underdog and like winning is it feels it feels a lot better than just you're meant to win the event and mm. go and win the event. Everyone's like, ah, that, we knew that was going to happen. And it's kind of like just making it there, you know, you've already won, right? Yeah, yeah ex- <laughs> exactly. So yeah, so we got there and then we weren't meant to win. Ended up placing second, so we, we didn't win, but we, we played close games against the team that won the event immunity. Um, but yeah, just just getting the top two was all we really wanted, yeah. um, just to make it to world champs. And yeah, one of the craziest times ever. I mean, competing on the world stage must have just been, me thinking about it, it sounds so daunting. <laughs> like, how did you deal with the, the pressure of so many people watching you and the big stage? Yeah, no, it's, it's pretty, pretty nuts, honestly. I guess like for us going in, there weren't many expectations because regions outside of North America have never really performed on the world stage, like at a high level. So like, obviously we want to do well and we wanted to play well and like represent our country. Um, but there, there wasn't really expectations on us to perform. So it's like, I guess there's not much pressure in terms of like, you guys need to win, you guys need to go over there to this. We just went over to play, you know, do, do as best as we you know possibly could. Um, yeah, I think we we had two American teams in our pool, which they kind of kind of took it out on us a bit. Um, but the European team we matched up against, we ended up losing 3-2 in like a close series. Like it was like, it was anyone's game really. And they were like number one seed in Europe. So I don't know. For us, that was, that was a pretty good effort. Uh, it would have been nice to win that series. But yeah, no, nah, it's, yeah, I don't know, it's fun. Yeah. That kind of, you know, it makes me realise, like, through gaming, if, if you're a professional, even if you're just a casual player, like, you're going to experience hardships, you're going to experience mistakes. And have you, experienced, I'm sure you have experienced that, but how do you bounce back from that? And, and do you ever really get used to it? Yeah, no, there definitely is. Eh? There's times where, you, you know, you lose tournaments or you, you don't place where you want to place and it's quite disappointing. It can be like extremely like detrimental to you like I don't know, the mental health of the whole team. Everyone's like, no, like what are we doing? This is this is this is not great. Um I'm real lucky like with the, the current team I'm on, like Diables. we we're, we're stuck together through like everything. And I think that's that's a huge like statement to like our I don't know, like our personalities and everything. It's like we're not just our team isn't just about, you know, winning and that. We we all like like each other on like a personal level and we get along, and we have fun. Um, whereas some teams they they lose and they just split up and they're, they're done, which it, you see it way too often. Eh? And it, it must suck, you know. Like it just you know, you play one bad tournament and you split up. It's like that's not the end. Like you you, you can practice and go over things, and you know you can you you can get better, and then you can just you know keep the same lineup. But I don't know. It, yeah, I feel like that almost goes back to your thing about you know some people do it for passion, whereas some people do it for kind of superficial reasons like yeah. money and. So, so perhaps, you know, that's it. You guys, you know, you guys have like the sense of like camaraderie and you guys have your own team and, and yeah. it's fun, right? Yeah, yeah, definitely. I think, I mean, like for us, for our team as a whole, like we all have full-time jobs. Yeah. So I guess like Halo isn't like our primary source of income or anything. And we just like, we are doing it for the fun and everything. Still obviously want to win and do as good as we possibly can. Um, but yeah, I think a lot of, a lot of players might take it to that extreme, which is like fair. Like I think it's like fair enough to not want to lose and if you lose you get disappointed and you want to change things you want to you want to be the best and there's nothing that'll try and you know stop you from doing it but i think like personally i think sometimes people uh too quick to you know fire a shot and yeah and give up and you know just change everything which yeah are there any upcoming events that you're looking forward to that you're either partaking in or maybe you're just excited to watch it yep there is indeed uh there's so there's a a big one coming up in Melbourne. It's called a DreamHack Melbourne. So it's uh, it's you know it's what everyone in like the whole Halo scene has been waiting for. It's the big, it's the big event of the year. It's a big, it's a qualifier event, right? And you, so you 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 play in that and you place in the top two and you end up going to America to play in Orlando, which is a like a minor event. So you qualify from that into the World Champs. It's a bit confusing. Yeah, but, yes it is. Um, but at, at the end of that. The event is for like, a, it's like basically to play for Worlds. You mm. know, you got to place well there to even get a chance to play at Worlds. Um, so, you know, it's something that's extremely exciting. And I think a lot of people want to like attend and want people, like obviously everyone wants to attend that plays Halo competitively, wants to play in the Halo World Champs. It's like, it's a huge, you know, it's a tick off the bucket list. I guess if your bucket list has got some hard, hard little activities on it. But um, yeah, so, I mean, obviously for me, I've already attended one and, you know, to go to another one would be pretty insane. And I, th- 
you know, it's definitely something I want to do. And yeah, I'm looking forward to it. Yeah, yeah. good luck to you and um, the rest of the Die Wolves thank team you, with that. You. Yeah. So you've been playing Halo for many years over many different versions of it. Um, so Halo Infinite is the most recent one. How do you compare that and what do you think of like all the new changes and all the new game modes? Yeah, uh, it's different, right? Like the, there's obviously changes when they bring out new games for any title really, you know, they change things. They want to bring more people into the game. Um, you know, there's at, at its core, like Halo Infinite, it's it's a good game. I think it's got like a lot of, you know, great things about it. I think even even the fact that it's free to play, you know, that's something that's it's, it's really good for Halo. Like we've never had a free to play game. It's been on Xbox most of the time. Um, and then, you know, you've had to pay not only Xbox Live, but you've had to pay for the game itself. And, you know, there was, there was still plenty of people playing, but having a game that's free to play is way more appealing, right? Like, oh, you can just jump on anyone, anyone that has a PC that can run the game, you know, just jump on and play. Um, but yeah, I think there, there are a couple of issues with the current state of the game. Uh, yeah, so there's, there's one thing that I feel it's like my biggest pet peeve basically is they don't have an anti-cheat. Um, which is something that's really huge, you know, and like competitive games, like for years, there's been people that have cheated and like, you know, done things that are fully against what the game, you knew what you should be doing. Mm. Um, and, you know, a lot, of, a lot of games, most games have anti-cheat. So it stops, stops you from doing things like having wall hacks, seeing people through walls, which you shouldn't see people, you know, people that have like a, something that's helping with their aim, like they'll just lock onto people. Whereas, you know, normally you manually have to do it yourself with some of these hacks, people just lock straight on and they just, you know, I'll just destroy everything they see. Um, but yeah, that's definitely the biggest thing. And there's a lot of like controversies that have been happening recently with like competitive players and is this person cheating? Like we don't know. And they can't, they can't tell. They can only, you know, they can only go off what someone says or they'll send, you know, a, a theater clip of them doing something, but you can't actually fully see what's happening. Maybe they just randomly looked at that wall and they, they didn't know someone was there, but they were looking there and then it looks like they were looking through the yeah. wall, but you just don't know. But yeah, for me, that's like the biggest thing. As soon as they get an anti on the game, I think it's going to help it like, you know, greatly. Um, yeah, but and then yeah, there's, there's a couple of other things, you know, that they could fix as well with Halo Infinite. But yeah, for the most part, I, I like the game. I think it's got, it's definitely got, a, it's got opportunities to be a lot bigger than what it is currently. Yeah. I've never really like understood the people who risk it all cheating. Like I, I, I understand what they're trying to do. They want to be really good at the game and get good ranks. But you know, like you said, it's it's about the passion and enjoying the game. Yeah. So if you're just you're, you're not even playing it, if you've got cheats yeah. and that's yeah, <laughs> that's exactly the same like opinion I have as well. Like I would never do it because what's the point? Mm. It's like it's it's completely different. Like you know, there's cheating like back in the day. Like you play Age of Empires and you have like a little <laughs> big daddy. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. So you know that's which is completely different. You're not playing online. You're not competing yeah. in like that. You know that kind of level. And that's just like it's like a different kind of cheat. Like Grand Theft Auto as well. You know, you yeah. can playing the you know the, the game and you spawn in some tank or something. It's those cheats are not nothing compared to like fully destroying like the integrity of the game by cheating and it's just yeah it's not not ideal <laughs> yeah uh, I, I don't know why anyone would do it personally as well like it's just stupid now I've heard that you have the nickname the great Kiwi Hope can you please great. tell us the story behind that <laughs> that all started from uh, uh, a guy called Jason Spiller um, he's kind of a big dog in the uh, gaming scene in New Zealand you may have heard of him um, but basically like back when I went to Worlds leading up to it like you know we, we were like the only New Zealand team that were going over and had the potential to qualify and then I was the captain of the squad right and I was you know the Kiwi hope you know I was the hope of New Zealand you know to make the world championships and all this uh, but yeah I'm not too sure about that one but I don't know I don't know if there's another story to it that, that <laughs> J Jason knows that I don't know but yeah that, that, that's what I know so you had like the way of representing New Zealand and making yeah I guess so. So, so, so you're like, the great Kiwi hope <laughs> the great Kiwi hope yeah so that's a very interesting story. Can you tell us one about the Guac of Truth? I went over to E3 in 2015, maybe, wait, 2014 and 2015. Um, and there's this, so there was this Mexican place in downtown LA. And it, yeah, they, it's the best guacamole. <laughs> yeah. I, okay. So they, they make the guac in front of you. They bring out this big, you know, this big board and they have all these avocados and the guy, He'll make it right in front of you and, you know, chucks it all together and you got it, you know, it's fresh as it could possibly be. And it's like, it's some of the best guac you'd ever taste in your life. I'm not even kidding. Oh, I wish I could have it right now. So yeah, we all experienced that like at E3. So Jason is, Jason is there, you know, we went there both times when I went to E3, you know, we went to this Mexican joint and oh, 
Yeah, the guac of truth. Oh, it's just that good. Why is it the guac of truth though? Is it? I guess like, was it like an awakening? Was it that good? <laughs> yeah, you just saw the truth. Exactly. You know, I just realized what the meaning of life was. <laughs> after. So where to from here? Both in your professional life, but also your personal life. Yeah. So for my personal life, I I work for the bank. My role is a financial crime associate. That's cool. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I, I, mean, get, so I, get, I get the hate for anti-cheating even more yeah, now. I know. <laughs> I know, I'm watching out, I'm watching people. Eh? Um, but yeah, so I don't know. I, I feel like I just, you know, I'm doing that job and it's, it's quite enjoyable. Mm. It's good. Um, but yeah, apart from that, my gaming side, I feel like it's, uh, you know, it's the dream hack in Melbourne that's coming up. Like, that's a big one. Um, you know, really got to put in the work for that to try and, you know, make it to another world championships. I think that would be amazing. Um, but yeah, I think. Yeah, just seeing how the rest of the year goes, like Halo-wise and all that. Hopefully we get an anti-cheat for Halo, and then, yeah, <laughs> there we are. Cool, thank you so much. If anyone wants to follow you and keep up with you, how can they How can they do that? Yeah, I have a, I have a Twitter. It's just at bald underscore unit. Um, that's that's all I really use. I used to stream on Twitch at uh, Twitch TV forward slash bald. Uh, but, yeah, no, nah, that's that's not, not, not the ways anymore. <laughs> um, but, yeah, no, nah, thank you very much for... You know, the interview and everything? No, it's thank you so much for um, giving us your time and giving us a bit of an insight into what it's like to be a professional Halo player. So <laughs> best, of, best of luck to you and to Dye Wolves. Sweet. Thank you very much. <laughs>